Nowadays, we are very lucky that due to medical progress, many diseases can be treated. To prevent us from getting sick in the first place, doctors often order tests to detect and treat diseases earlier, so-called screening tests. The learning goals of this video are to understand the principles of screening tests and to learn about the benefits and harms of screening. What is screening? Screening is a systematic testing procedure used in an apparently healthy population to find undetected diseases and risk factors. Screening means that a large number of people are examined to find a few who have a certain disease or risk factors. Screening is used for people who have no symptoms. It is not screening when a woman finds a lump in her breast and is referred for a mammography. In such a case, a mammography is a diagnostic examination. Screening can have many different purposes. It can be used to find risk factors for a disease, for example, high blood pressure, or to detect a disease early, or to detect metabolic disorders. Screening is also used to detect cancer at an early stage. Some screening examinations begin in the womb. Cells of the fetus are examined to determine whether genetic abnormalities are present. An important point to consider is that screening is more than a test. Screening is a sequence of tests and therapeutic interventions. The goal of screening is not to find diseases, but always to reduce morbidity and mortality. The National Health Service in England defined criteria for the effectiveness and appropriateness of a screening program. The disease or risk factor should relate to an important health problem, such as if the disease is particularly common or may run a very severe course. The condition should include a latent period during which the condition is detectable by screening, if screening is for a risk factor, there should be evidence that the risk factor is associated with a serious and treatable disease. Screening tests to identify people with the condition must be simple, safe, and accurate. Effective treatment for the condition must be available. And early treatment leads to better results than late treatment. Evidence, preferably from RCTs, is available that the screening program reduces mortality and or morbidity. And ideally, evidence, preferably from RCTs, is available that the benefits of screening outweigh the potential harms. Screening can be useful to improve health, but it can also be harmful. So what are the harms of screening? Tests can be directly associated with risks, such as radiation exposure during x-ray examinations. A false positive test result is an abnormal finding in people who are actually healthy. This causes healthy people to worry. In contrast, sick people are reassured by false negative test results that they do not have the disease. Screening detects diseases that the patient would never have noticed otherwise. For example, screening examinations can identify tumors that grow very slowly and would never have caused symptoms. When such tumors are detected, it is called overdiagnosis. If the screening test results are positive, subsequent tests are done to confirm a diagnosis, such as a biopsy in the case of a positive mammography result. These subsequent tests are also associated with the risk of adverse events. Every therapy is associated with possible side effects. If a cancer is diagnosed that would never have caused symptoms, the person is exposed to the risk of side effects without any benefit. Intuitively, the benefits of screening are often overestimated. Two main phenomena contribute to this overestimation, lead time bias and overdiagnosis. What is lead time? Lead time is the time between early diagnosis by screening and the time when the disease is normally diagnosed on the basis of symptoms. Let's look at a graph. The line represents life from birth to death. At time A, a disease develops and is not yet detectable with tests. At time B, the disease is detectable with a screening test. At time C, symptoms appear. 
Here, the disease can be detected by the doctor through these symptoms. Lead time is the period between early diagnosis by screening and diagnosis based on symptoms. The crucial question, however, is, does treatment at point B lead to a better result than treatment at the latter point C? This is not always the case. Sometimes, it is lead time bias that just makes it look like early treatment is better than later treatment. So what is lead time bias? People who are screened for a lethal disease appear to live longer from diagnosis to death than people who are diagnosed later based on symptoms. Even when no effective treatment for this disease is available. Let's look at our graph again. It is very clear where a lethal disease without an effective treatment ends, but where do we start if we want to measure survival time? If we start measuring survival time at the time of diagnosis through early screening, then the patient seems to survive longer. If we start measuring later, when symptoms appear, the survival time seems shorter. If early treatment is not better than late treatment, then survival time is only apparently prolonged by early diagnosis. Lead time bias means that people whose disease is detected earlier through screening do not live longer if the period in which they know about their disease is longer. Another harm caused by screening is overdiagnosis. In the case of cancer screening, overdiagnosis is a diagnosis of a carcinoma of which the patient would not have known without screening. The circle represents the population being screened. A significant proportion of the population has a type of cancer that would never have been detected or caused symptoms during their lifetime. This is known as pseudodisease. If screening is done to detect cancer early, harmless cancers that would never have caused symptoms are discovered. These are often difficult to distinguish from cancers that progress and need to be treated. Therefore, Patients with pseudodiseases are also treated and suffer side effects that would not have been necessary. There is a famous example of overdiagnosis, the thyroid cancer epidemic in South Korea. This graph represents the incidence of thyroid cancer and associated mortality from South Korea from 1993 to 2011. In 1999, the government in South Korea initiated a national screening program for cancer and other common diseases including offering ultrasound to detect thyroid cancer early. If you look at the dark blue curve in the graph, you will see that the rate of thyroid cancer diagnoses in 2011 was 15 times higher than in 1993. The light blue dotted line parallel to the x-axis shows that, despite the dramatic increase in incidence, the mortality from thyroid cancer remains unchanged, typical of the phenomenon of overdiagnosis. Thyroid cancer is now the most commonly diagnosed cancer in South Korea. Experts believe that at least one-third of adults have a small papillary thyroid carcinoma, the vast majority of which cause no symptoms during their lifetime. Thyroid cancer surgery has significant consequences for patients. Most patients receive thyroid replacement therapy for life. Some suffer side effects. In South Korea, an analysis of insurance data from more than 15,000 Koreans who underwent surgery found that 11% had hypoparathyroidism and 2% had vocal cord paralysis. Let's have a closer look at cancer screening. Cancer covers a spectrum of tumors that grow at different rates, from those that are harmless and hardly grow or even regress, to fast-growing tumors. Indolent tumors do not grow at all or grow very slowly or even regress. They are often discovered during autopsy studies. For example, studies on deceased men show that 9 out of 10 men have prostate cancer that was not diagnosed during their lifetime. Screening has no effect on mortality in patients with indolent tumors. The situation is different when a slow-growing tumor develops into cancer via precursors and only develops metastases in late stages and eventually leads to death. With slow-growing tumors, there is a chance that screening has benefits. For example, removing polyps during colonoscopy reduces the risk of colorectal cancer. Rapidly growing tumors are often not detected by screening, but start to grow between screening examinations. With these tumors, screening has hardly any influence on the course of the disease. When we think about screening, there's one more aspect that we need to consider, 
namely the accuracy of the screening test. There are no perfect tests, especially when tests are applied to populations with low prevalence of a disease, as is the case with screening. Screening tests examine people without symptoms. Therefore, the probability of being ill is low, even if the test is positive. In the following hypothetical example, we show you how many people receive positive and negative test results during screening and how many of the results can be confirmed as correct. Let's assume 10 out of 1,000 people have cancer but have no symptoms and do not know about it. Our screening test has a sensitivity of 80% and a specificity of 70%. A sensitivity of 80% means that 8 out of 10 people with cancer are actually detected by the test and 2 remain undetected. A specificity of 70% means that 297 healthy people get a positive test result even though there is no cancer. They have to go through more testing and they will experience anxiety until it is clear that the screening test had a false positive finding. In summary, screening is done on healthy people, not on patients. Screening is a sequence of tests and interventions. The goal of screening is not to find diseases, but to reduce morbidity and mortality. Benefits and harms must be carefully weighed for one to be able to make an informed decision. Withholding information in order to achieve a desired behavior, such as participation in screening, is unethical.